Doctors of Reddit, what was the most overdramatic or underdramatic patient you ever had? Overdramatic, tons of stories, but the most recent was a patient demanding a heavy Percocet recipe, far more than I would prescribe even post-surgery, after having a nasal swab for COVID-19 completed. I get that it's temporarily uncomfortable as I've had it done several times myself, but no way was I buying him writhing around screeching about how much pain he was in. When the patient eventually realized I wasn't budging it was as if someone had flipped a switch and he miraculously recovered. Under dramatic, patient tried extracting his own tooth and inadvertently pushed it up through the abscess and into his right maxillary sinus. To my surprise he adamantly declined even local anesthesia, no matter how much my staff was pleading with him. Patient autonomy is a gray area here in the US, given how insanely litigious everything is, so after receiving clearance slash written consent to proceed with treatment I figured he'd just have to learn the hard way. Instead of performing a lateral window root tip retrieval I took a surgical suction tip slash curette and removed all three fragments through the alveolar ridge warning him several times beforehand that it would hurt like hell. The guy never even flinched. I was able to complete the procedure, debride the infection, and graft the floor of the sinus with membrane slash sutures without incident. Go figure. Farmers are notorious for being under dramatic. Had a farmer a while ago who was up a tree for some reason and fell out. As bad luck would have it, someone had left a dirty meat hook at the bottom in the tree and he landed on it, impaling his butt cheek. He proceeded to pull it out, finish what he was doing, drive himself home, and go to bed. The only reason he came to hospital was because his wife woke up to a bed full of blood and insisted he get that looked at. The underdramatic are more interesting, mid-70s woman, generally healthy, presents to outpatient neurology clinic with an altered gait. Dragging feet more than usual, feels she's tripping when walking up steps. Family describes tendency to repeat herself more often. Neurological examination normal other than a slightly odd, slow and dragging gait. Honestly looks like she's faking an odd gait. Suspect malingering but above average amounts of liquid in the areas surrounding the brain can give these types of symptoms. Court scan the brain. Almost half of her brain was smushed to the other side and filled up with water. Massive subarachnoid cyst. Think intracranial water ballon. Probably been growing for years. No other symptoms. She only came into our clinic since her daughters were worried about her memory. Made a full recovery by draining the fluid. Still makes me wonder how many people out there are walking around with half a smushed brain without knowing about it. The underdramatic are more interesting. Mid-70s woman. Generally healthy. Presence to outpatient neurology clinic with an altered gait. Dragging feet more than usual. Feels she's tripping when walking up steps. Family describes tendency to repeat herself more often. Neurological examination normal other than a slightly odd. Slow and dragging gait. Honestly looks like she's faking an odd gait. Suspect malingering but above average amounts of liquid in the areas surrounding the brain can give these types of symptoms. Court scan the brain. Almost half of her brain was smushed to the other side and filled up with water. Massive subarachnoid cyst. Think intracranial water ballon. Probably been growing for years. No other symptoms. She only came into our clinic since her daughters were worried about her memory. Made a full recovery by draining the fluid, still makes me wonder how many people out there are walking around with half a smushed brain without knowing about it. So, I'm one of three daughters of two general practitioners. I'm sure my parents are good doctors to other people, but when it came to us, they tended to tell us you'll be fine and that was that. An iconic story is when my sister fell off the balance beam on her elbow during a gymnastics class, and my parents told her to just suck it up, because it's the weekend and we don't want to bother the doctors on the weekend shift. She lived with a pretty badly broken elbow for 2-3 two to three days before my parents finally decided to take her to the hospital. But the main story I wanted to talk about is, when I was 7 years old, I was quite overly sensitive as a child, so when I told my parents my left hip was hurting, they put a hot water bottle on it and left it at that. But then I got a fever, and it didn't go down, and at a certain point I could not move my leg at all anymore, because my hip hurt so bad, and when we eventually got to the hospital, because my parents realized that maybe this wouldn't be fine, it turned out I had a severe infection in my hip joint and had sepsis. 
spent two weeks in hospital and 14 years harassing my parents, so far lol. I once cared for a repeat self-harmer that put a knife into their neck, regretted it, taped it in place, and bicycled to the hospital, a few miles, past carfuls of normal people, parked the bike, walked into Tridge to check in, through a waiting room of grannas and kids and men with chest pain, with a kitchen paring knife duct taped in place sticking straight out. Court scan later showed that the tip of the blade was 2mm from the carotid artery. I think we have all seen our share of overdramatic patients, or heard the tales, so I'll go with the less common underdramatic patient. Patient presented to the trauma -er with an 18 inch machete blade firmly implanted across the top of his skull. He was driven to the hospital by a friend, possible assailant slash owner of said machete, ambulated on his own into the air, had totally normal vital signs in Tridge, a slight steady trickle of blood from the wound, denied pain and was in no apparent distress. Due to a mass trauma event, the air was insanely busy, so it took us a while to get him a bed. In the meantime, he calmly sat in the waiting area nearest to the Tridge station so we could keep an eye on him and watched TV as staff were running around like crazy, phones ringing non-stop, patients bitching about the wait time to be seen and exhibiting other types of tomfoolery. Machete man just sat there tranquilly exhibiting his true zen mastery of machete head wounds. All these years later, I can still see him with that machete lodged in his skull. He had an uncomplicated treatment course and suffered no impairment from the injury. He was cooperative and nice to all his caregivers. He also profusely thanked us for caring for him. Probably one of the few that did that night. Med student here. In my abjan clerkship, this woman came in pretty hesitantly at the urging of her girlfriend for pelvic pain. She apologized if she was wasting our time and said it was probably nothing. This poor lady had a cyst the size of my head on her ovary that caused torsion, twisting and cutting off blood supply. She was rushed into surgery, but lost that ovary. People say it's more painful than childbirth and here she was, apologizing to us. Nad my dad's story, old guy that needed a pacemaker, worked a farm in Utah, I think. He realized at some point that when he started having an episode he could just grab the electric fence and it would stop. So this badass just ran fencing everywhere he could on his property and grab the fence if he had an issue. Been doing this for months if not years. Thanked my dad for putting in the device saying how he can finally get out to areas of his property that he couldn't run fence to. 6070 year old lady arrives at trauma -er. She was being chased by a cow, running for her life, and fell off a fucking 2 meter ledge. She had several fractures, but only really complained about her leg, and tried to get up, and walk away several times telling us she was fine. Initially we thought she had some head trauma, and was completely disoriented, but it turns out she was just that stubborn. She was hospitalized for a while, and had a good recovery. I do wonder if the cow fell of the cliff as well lol it. Thank you so much for the likes and awards xd, and I changed cliff to ledge, something something bad English. We were doing paternity testing for an apparently extremely acrimonious case of your son impregnated my daughter. No he didn't, your daughter sleeps with lots of other boys. Each side sent a lawyer to the appointment. Each lawyer had their phone out recording and followed the blood and cheek swabs from collection through the lab for DNA extraction, performing the test in our PCR room and watching me analyze the data files which is exactly as boring as it sounds. It's like dude, we are the neutral third party lab here. We have literally zero interest in the outcome of the case. You don't need to be so dramatic. All the chain of custody stuff is documented. We have a second observer signing off on sample IDs. We are not going to risk lose a license by accepting a bribe from either set of parents. I was in my last week of school as a rad tech student and a patient cannon through the air for a series of zrays. He claimed to have fallen down some stairs and we basically had to zray both legs from the knee down. Reader, I have never met a bigger, winnier baby. He moaned and groaned and flinched at the lightest touch, refused to hold still, would not straighten his legs, complained about the table and Zray cassette being too hard, there were no visible injuries aside from a few scrapes and nothing obvious on the Zray's. He was still convinced that he would never walk again, and had broken both legs irreparably. 
Funniest part was that we had a different patient come in on the same day with a similar complaint. He actually had fractures in both legs and feet and was very calm and cooperative for this raise despite his injuries. Nat Young trauma patient 17 yo t bone by a garbage truck. Moving him onto the court table he said our and silent tears came down his face. Then he apologized for complaining and thanked us profusely. Turns out he had a few broken vertebrae, broke half his ribs, and had a fractured hip and clavicle. Kid whimpered a few times during the CTs and again apologized when we came back in. Like dude, you could scream in my face and I'd understand. Not a doctor, but a firefighter slash EMT, most under dramatic, dispatched with law enforcement for an assault with injuries. Get near the scene, and was cleared by PD that the scene was safe, while they were actively searching for the assailant, and that our patient was sitting on the bench of the bus stop. Guy was about 30 years old with a decent laceration on his face but nothing major, stated he was jumped by some guy in the bushes out of nowhere, and had to fight him off. He didn't really complain about his laceration too much and stated his back was a little sore and that he feels fine and didn't want to go to the hospital. Vitals all looked good and he appeared fine. But just to be safe I wanted to give his whole body a look over to be sure he didn't have any other lacerations and god was I glad I did. As I pulled this guy's large coat off, winter at night, I see a knife protruding from his lower right back with a slow but steady stream of blood coming out. Guy was as shocked as I was. Okay, late to the thread, but what the hell. This happened a couple of days ago. Nat, a woman walks into the air walking very bow-legged. She seems calm and explains that she has some swelling in the right side of her external genitals. She thought she might have had an infected cyst and she drove herself hoping for help draining it and antibiotics. We didn't think much of it, it clearly wasn't a rush to the front of the line emergency. So an hour or so later they bring her into a room. She has a fever and high blood pressure, but still calm and stoic. So the NP gets her story and has her remove her pants and underwear and cover with a sheet. She is apologizing profusely about not being able to clean herself very well before coming in. When NP pulls up the sheet her labia is swollen to the size of a coconut. She had an abscess that was starting to cause sepsis. The only emotion she showed was embarrassment about not being able to clean herself because of the pain and a single tear down her face when the wheeled her to the air. I'm a nurse, and we had a patient recently who was palliative, expected to die naturally. His body functions were only at about 10%. He wasn't eating or drinking, and he wasn't peeing or defecating anymore. He just laid in bed with his eyes closed breathing. When people get to this point usually the only care we provide is for comfort versus sparing life. So we don't give people food or water because they are usually unconscious and more likely to choke and be harmed. This patient's daughter was some big shot lawyer from the US and when she saw that we weren't feeding her dad she started recording everything we did and said to her and then phoned the police. I remember a police officer coming to the unit, asking to speak to me, the most responsible nurse at the time, and asking me why I was withholding food. I explained to the officer that I had physician's orders to withhold food and that the patient was at a severe aspiration risk. The police officer was like cool, case closed, and left. The daughter was unfortunately banged from the hospital premises by management for interfering with patient care. As a med student, I was third row in helping to try to code a drying GI bleeder. People who have end-stage liver disease don't make clotting factor well and also have anatomical difficulty that leads to big, ropey vulnerable blood vessels in the stomach that are at risk to bleed. And when people bleed inside the stomach you can't hold pressure, you simply must get them stable enough to have life-saving endoscopy and clipping of the bleeder. This guy was exorcist level vomiting bright red blood. He was exsanguinating into his stomach and we couldn't get his blood pressure to stabilize enough to get a scope into him for a while. There were runners bringing us coolers of emergency release blood, and the splatters and pools of blood he had vomited reached across the hall. When we finally got him packed up to go to the endo suite, the family next door quietly apologized for taking our time for their chronic non-emergent issue, and could they go home now? Guy I did construction with accidentally hit himself in the lower abdomen with a nail gun. Had fluid leaking out from around the nail. He takes it out, and even more starts coming out. Was pretty sure it was pee. 
went to the hospital, very calmly holding his finger over the hole, told them he thought he might have punctured his bladder or something. The nurse said that wasn't very likely, so he took the finger off to show her the fluid leaking out. Once again, a solid stream of what was most likely actually urine came pouring out, much like he was peeing through a hole in his abdomen. She fainted. They had to do some minor surgery to close the hole. I would imagine he's someone's under dramatic patient story. Over dramatic, I couldn't even begin to describe this. The percentage of the population who cannot cope with life is ridiculously high. I regularly see young adults hysterically crying because they have a cold or some small injury. Sure, I get it hurts and you don't feel great, but come on. Under dramatic, the one that stands out was on a knob slash gin rotation when I was in school. This stoic Eastern European lady went into labor while she was at work earlier in the day. Apparently she never called her husband to tell him. So there she is, about to start pushing, and her husband calls her. She just says I'm having the baby. Then there is some pause, where he says something. She replies, no, you stay there with, other child's name. I'll be home tomorrow. Then she hung up, and pushed out a baby. My Dowler said the pregnant ladies, that come screaming into the maternity ward the baby is coming, now fall into two categories 1, they are dilated to 1, 2 centimeters, and are hours to days away, or they are minutes away from birth and they have the baby within 10 to 15 minutes tops. The last lady like this was the day, before I came to give birth and she didn't make it to the elevators from the parking garage. One of the tensest staff situations I have had, we had a Jane Doe trauma code, a pedestrian hit by car, polytrauma with clearly non servable injuries to the head and neck obscuring her features, but as we cut her clothes off the nurses, exclaimed it's asterisk asterisk asterisk, recognized her jewelry. She was one of our frequent flyers, a lady with severe schizoaffective disorder and chronic depression whom we all knew very well. By M's report she had jumped out into a state highway in front of a car, wearing dark clothing at night. It's hard feeling, like we were in a sense her only family. We were gentle with her, and genuinely grieved. And then M's brings us a patient having a panic attack. He had been driving on a local state highway at night, when someone jumped out in front of his car, and he was terribly afraid the person was badly hurt. I don't work in a large place, there were some delicate logistics involved in keeping her body in the state police photoing her away from him. Not a doctor was in a mobile aid station, and one of our guys caught a bullet in the ass during a live fire exercise he just laid there calmly as we got vitals to hand him off to the ambulance Al the only thing he requested was a blanked because he was cold and all the officers were shitting themselves because someone got shot during training at night. I was shitting myself, because I was on radio guard when it happened, and my NCO was gonna fuck me up, because he thought I was asleep they admitted, to not calling to let us know. Oh god, this could have been me. One time I was driving down the road and some shit flew in my eye, not literal shit. Well, I figured it would work itself out. I went to the doctors, when it didn't a couple days later. He said no problem I can get that out. He proceeded to give me what I can only describe as cocaine eye drops, and proceeded to dig out the shit with a fucking needle. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever gotten anything dug out of your eye before, but you can't close your eye and you have to watch this needle come at your eye until it disappears, and is nothing more than a ghost moving around in the jelly of your eye. This whole time I'm freaking the fuck out, cussing, being very vocal about the entire experience. Then, he hits the object, and the way your brain registers that vibration in your eye, it sounds like metal hitting on a rock, when he makes contact, a high pining noise every time. The whole experience was entirely fucked up 0 tenths, wouldn't do again. We had call for a 911 trauma on its way to our head for a child who was accidentally run over by a riding lawn mower. Reports were that the patient was essentially eviscerated. They roll the child in, and I'm expecting this kid to be unconscious and unresponsive. But this kid was wide awake, their innards hanging out of their abdominal cavity. Not crying at all. Only time they showed distress was when the nurse tried to insert him forth. We got that kid straight to the, or as soon as we could, and he ended up okay in the end. But I'll never forget how calm he was considering I could see his kidney when he got rolled in.